The bushlands of southeast Queensland exhibit incredible diversity. The undergrowth in particular is teeming with an all manner of small animals. Today, I decided to head out to take a look at just a small handful of these charismatic little organisms. One arthropod found in this habitat that is rather common and yet very infrequently encountered is this. This is a scorpion in the genus Hormurus, and as you can see, it is largely harmless. Now, I can come a bit closer so you can have a better look here. As you can tell by the body proportions, these scorpions are ambush predators and they do not rely much on their venom to kill their prey, so much they use those very large, very powerful claws. A common myth um, that is often told about scorpions is that the smaller the scorpion is, the stronger the venom, and likewise, the larger the scorpion, the weaker the venomous sting. And while it is true that the very largest scorpions, such as those in the genus Heterometrus and Pandinus, are indeed uh, very not particularly dangerous, they don't pose any sort of threat to humans, the same does not truly apply for the other end of the scale. Many of the most venomous scorpions, such as those in the genera Androctonus, Parabuthus and Leurus, are all fairly large scorpions. And likewise, many small species are completely harmless. This one is roughly medium-sized. And, and, as you can see, is about as harmless as scorpions get. Now, the large claws are typical of a scorpion that relies on ambush hunting to capture its prey. This is not an active hunter like some of the boothids are. This is a creature that will um, delve out a sort of shallow scrape beneath a rock or other kind of shelter. And, and when it is hungry, usually at night, it will stick its claws out of the entrance and seize anything that comes close enough for it to grab. And the shape of these claws, as well as the narrowness of the entrance, also helps the animal be able to defend itself because if a predator, such as a centipede, comes in, it will use its claws as a sort of shield to plug the entrance and prevent any animal from being able to get past them, effectively forming a, effectively forming a kind of living barricade. So yeah, a truly fascinating creature, and we'll, we'll see if, if we can find more. All right, another scorpion. This one is a female and uh, rather covered in dirt, admittedly. But you can tell the sex in this genus by the claws. In this case, the claws lack any noticeable notches between them, which only the males possess. So yeah, as you can see, this is a female and a rather young specimen, probably not mature yet. Scorpions are one of evolution's greatest success stories. They have changed very little throughout a history that spans over 400 million years. During the foundation of our planet's terrestrial ecosystems, scorpions were among the first generalist predators, an ecological niche they continue to occupy to this very day. But these scorpions are not the only small ambush predators that call this stretch of forest home. They share this rugged habitat with another predatory arachnid, and a much more venomous one. This tangled mess of webbing belongs to Hadronici infensa, a member of that notorious group of arachnids, the Atracids, also known as the funnel web spiders. Quite understandably the most feared spiders in Australia. But there is another predatory arthropod here that can give even Australia's deadliest spider a real run for its money. One group of arthropods that I'm sure anyone who's followed this channel for any substantial length of time will know that I'm very fond of are the centipedes, and in these forests they are quite abundant as well. This is a very common species in southeast Queensland known as Cormocephalus brachycirrus. And as you can tell by its appearance, it is a burrowing ambush predator. It has very short legs because long legs and long appendages in general are more of a hindrance than a help in a, in a subterranean environment. These short legs, however, are very effective at guiding the centipede's body through the underground. Now this is one kind of lifestyle we can see in centipedes, but they are quite diverse in their behaviours, and let's compare that to this. This is a species I'm sure you'll be very familiar with if you follow this channel. This is Ethmostigmus rubripes, and I must clarify this is not from this area. This is one of my own pet centipedes that I've bought out to compare to the Cormocephalus. And unlike the Cormocephalus, which like I said is a burrower and an ambush predator, this is an active hunter. At, ver at night, especially after rain, they will be prowling through the undergrowth, flushing out small animals from their burrows, burrowing spiders like trapdoors and funnel webs, even tarantulas are a particular favourite. And not only that, but they will be sitting on tree trunks which are 
essentially the vertical highways of the rainforest they come from, and grabbing any small animals that come within range. And as you would expect, they exhibit a different morphology to the Cormocephalus in correspondence to their difference in lifestyle. They have much longer legs and much more powerful legs. This enables them to cruise effortlessly through all sorts of terrain and scale vertical surfaces like tree trunks. Furthermore, they are physically much stronger than the Cormocephalus as they are taking on larger prey. And as for their venom, well, while Cormocephalus bites are no real big deal at all, perhaps they hurt as much as the bee sting. The bites from Ethmostigmus rubripes are very intense indeed. You can take it from me, this species boasts an absolutely virulent cocktail of toxins. Centipedes are one of our planet's most ancient hunters, with an ancestry stretching back over twice as old as the earliest dinosaurs. The sheer physical strength of many of the larger species allows them to take on not only large invertebrates, but even small vertebrates such as lizards and snakes. It seems fitting to end this field video on the animal that started this channel from the beginning. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I most certainly intend on doing more documentaries of this type in the future. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.